The art of printing goes back more than 500 years to the days of Johannes Gutenberg, who published a Bible that was the first book printed on movable type press in the West. Hey, what are you working on? Today, Dr. Van Truscott continues to advance the printing process, much like Gutenberg, with groundbreaking results. When I was young, I would take apart watches, my mom's appliances, which was probably not a good thing, but just wondering how things worked. In 2002, Van brought her curiosity for how things worked and engineering background to molecular imprints, which was later acquired by Canon Technologies. The company was working to develop higher resolution, lower cost of ownership printing solutions for its customers. Van focused on improving the technology behind jet and flash imprint lithography. Jet and flash imprint lithography is really a very high-tech version of a printing press. We essentially are able to print features incredibly small. There's some checkerboard wafers that Mary has imprinted. The printers at Canon Technology are designed to print on a thin slice of semiconductor material, also known as a wafer. These wafers are used in the fabrication of integrated circuits and other micro devices. Van's lab was set up to refine and perfect the company's dispense method onto these wafers in order to gain more control over this printing process. When I started here, we were using essentially a displacement pump, and uh, we were putting down single large drops on order of microliters. A microliter is one millionth of a liter, or roughly the size of an average salt crystal. The next thing that we're going to need to figure out is whether these electronics are compatible. Van's objective was to create a drop-on-demand technology to dramatically decrease the size of these drops. Success would be revolutionary in the industry. Well, she took the existing inkjet technology at the time and improved it in terms of making the drop smaller, faster, more accurately positioned. So right now we have inkjet systems which are clearly the most advanced in the world. We have the only industrial inkjet that can dispense a picoliter, and it's actually in a tool for semiconductor applications. To put a picoliter into context, there are several hundred thousand picoliters in just a single raindrop. Van and her associates were the first ones who came with totally new techniques of really putting on the surface of the disk minute droplets and putting them in a way so that they could create exactly what she wanted to achieve. The applications range from improved computer chips, so your cell phones will work 10 times better than they do today, brighter, crisper displays. Nanopharmaceuticals is looking out uh, more into the future and also to look at improved solar cells and batteries. So this is an experimental design. For Van, reaching this industry-changing goal was thrilling, but the journey was the biggest reward. I had lots of moments of, I'm never going to figure this out, <laughs> I think. I would say you fail 80% of the time, but of that 20% of success, it's really gratifying. And even though you may be failing 80% of the time, even out of those failures, there are huge lessons to learn, and those are the things that I think have really helped to refine me as a person, as a researcher, and as a scientist.